First up is Dr. Merle Matthews. He's a PhD at the University of Texas. He's a national figure and very much involved in healthcare policy issues. He's currently executive director, constable for affordable health insurance in Virginia, and a resident scholar with the Institute for Policy Innovation, widely published in, in major publications, including the Journal of Western Business Daily, Barron's, USA Today, Washington Times, and also Forbes. So obviously we have an individual here who very much knows what he's talking about. Please uh, welcome Dr. Matthews. Well, thank you, Scott. It is a great pleasure to be here out in Washington, the other Washington. Uh, I want to appreciate, uh, thank uh, Dan B. Smith for all the work he's done for the Washington Policy Center and the years you've been around. Uh, Paul Guppy, a longtime friend, and of course, I got a chance to meet with some of my old friends from the state. Uh, Dr. Steve Barquette, one of the stalwarts in healthcare reform. If I could move him from this Washington to the other Washington, we'd be better off in the in national healthcare debate. Um, I'm going to mention a couple of things here, a couple of publications that are available for you. The Council for Affordable Health Insurance does an annual state legislator's guide to health insurance solutions. We mail this out to every state legislator in the country. Uh, so all of your Washington legislators get this. It's available online, free of charge. You're able to go there and get, take a look at it. It discusses a number of health insurance options at the, uh, at the state level. We also just released, and I'll be mentioning this in a minute, uh, health insurance mandates in the states 2009. We go and track every health insurance mandate, state mandate in the country. Uh, we tabulate it. We put an actuarial cost on it. Um, we've, got it, we've been tracking this for a number of years. Uh, it big jump in them this year. Mandates are going up faster. We're getting more of them and it's making health insurance more expensive. I'm here to talk a little bit about the 10 things you ought to know about the uninsured. One of the issues driving health care reform is the uninsured. The goal out there has been how do we get the uninsured covered. I might say that that's really the only goal out there. Costs and other things tend to be taking second place to how you get the uninsured covered. So if that's going to be our goal, we ought to at least ask a few questions about who are these uninsured? What does this population look like? What are their characteristics? And I'll go through 10 things real quickly. Number one, the percentage of uninsured is roughly 15 to 16%, and that's remained the same for years. The number of uninsured tends to grow every year, but that's because the population tends to grow every year. The number, the percentage of uninsured is around that 15 or 16 percent. It increases a little bit when we're in a slowdown. It'll drop a little bit when the economy's doing very well, but it stayed pretty steady for 15, 20 years now. Uh, so we're not, we're not coming into a new crisis that has just recently developed. It's been roughly the same. Uh, you mentioned the 45, 46, 47 million uninsured. That number comes from the Census Bureau. It tracks it. I need to mention that. That is considered a point in time figure, that number of uninsured. That means that roughly 46 million people are uninsured right now. Uh, next month or two months from now, it still may be 46 million, but it's a different population. Some of those people will get insurance. Some of them will lose it. The reason I bring that up because Families USA, an organization in Washington, uh, has been uh, touting a study where they say roughly 87 million Americans are uninsured at some point in two years. The media tend to lose that, lose that second aspect of it. They say 87 million at some point in two years. The Census Bureau tracks the number of uninsured today. Families USA said, well, how many people have lost insurance, have been uninsured at some point over a two-year span? That's going to be a bigger number, just like if you were to ask the question, how many people does this hotel hold at one time versus how many people stayed in the hotel at some point this last year or over a two-year period? The longer you expand it, the bigger that number is going to be. Families USA, if you want to be generous, they're trying to sort of point out the problem. If you want to be less than generous, you might say they were trying to create a new, bigger number to create more political pressure to do um, health care reform. But that's, when you hear a number, sort of 87 million uninsured, that's a different number. It's looking at the number of uninsured who are at some point over a two-year period. In fact, just about everybody's uninsured at some point in their life. 
So if you expand that number to five years, ten years, or to a life, you'll get you'll get very close to 100 percent. That's our number of uninsured. Second, people are uninsured for relatively short periods of time. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the nonpartisan organization that's by Congress that sort of tracks these things, uh, they went out and looked at the number of uninsured who are, you know, how long is somebody uninsured? Nearly half of the uninsured are uninsured for less than four months. Only 12% are uninsured, excuse me, 6% were uninsured for more than two years. That's what we call the chronically uninsured. Very small percentage of the uninsured are uninsured for long periods of time. Being uninsured tends to be temporary. Third thing, most of the uninsured are workers. 61% of them are full-time workers for the whole year. Another 22% work at some part during the year. So 83% of the uninsured population tend to have a job, tend to be working at some point during the year with the large majority of them having a full-time job. Uninsured are not necessarily unemployed. Large majority of them have jobs and are working. Fourth thing, <clears throat> the uninsured tend to be young and healthy and minorities. 58% of the uninsured are under 36 years of old age. Most of them are in that sort of 18 to 35 year old category. They've uh, gotten out of high school, they've gotten out of college, they've taken their first job, they're just starting their careers. It may be a temporary job until they find something that they really want to do for the rest of their life. That tends to be the segment of the population that is uninsured. They also tend to be, because they're younger, they tend to be healthier than the rest of the population. They also tend to have lower incomes than the rest of the population. In addition, 12% of whites are uninsured versus 21% of blacks and 32% of Hispanics. So fairly small percentage of whites are uninsured, pretty large percentage of Hispanics are uninsured. Some 11 million of the 46 million uninsured are non-citizens. So nearly a quarter of them are not citizens. And more than half of the non-citizens are here illegally. Gives you a sense of what this uninsured population looks like. 